Hi, I'm Jessica Rabe, one of the co-founders of Data Check Research. In this video, I'm going to explain how generative artificial intelligence is similar to, but also so much more powerful in terms of single stock returns than the growth of the internet in the 1990s. There are some crucial distinctions that are having a direct impact on public equities, like the incredible rise of NVIDIA to the top of the S&P 500. As for the similarities, we have a new disruptive technology, of course, Gen AI, that is driving the NASDAQ comp higher, just like the internet did in the back half of the 90s. We've shown you this chart before, but it's worth updating and briefly bringing to your attention because the NASDAQ comp continues to eerily track its late 1990s bull run. This chart shows an index comparison of how the NASDAQ comp performed in the 1000 trading days following the start of 1995, marked by the blue line, versus its low on December 28, 2022, through today, marked by the orange line. Today marks a 692nd trading day from the NASDAQ's low in December 2022, and it's up 123% since then. On the same day in late September 1997, the index was also up 123% from the beginning of 1995. You can also see that the NASDAQ of the recent past has closely tracked its pullbacks and recoveries of almost 30 years ago. Our takeaways from this chart are twofold. First, U.S. large cap tech stocks are still early in a secular bull run, driven by monetization opportunities around Gen AI. Second, there will be pullbacks along the way, just like in every bull market. Now, there's at least one major difference between the tech bull runs of the 90s and now. Here's a chart that shows an index comparison of how the average of Intel, Cisco, Microsoft, and Oracle performed in the 1,000 trading days following the start of 1995, marked by the blue line, versus NVIDIA starting from the NASDAQ comps low on December 28th, 2022 through today, marked by the orange line. As the chart clearly shows, NVIDIA's performance since the NASDAQ's late 2022 lows has trounced the average of these 1990s tech stars over the same time frame starting in 1995. NVIDIA is a 1,247 percent since its low in December 2022. On the same day in late September 1997, the average of Cisco, Intel, Microsoft, and Oracle was up only 332 percent from the start of 1995. We think this chart is pretty dramatic and does a great job of showing just how scarce public Gen AI plays are currently, with NVIDIA capturing the early economics of AI far better than the numerous public internet-related companies of the 90s. I'll have more on this in a thought in a minute, but first, here's another chart that compares the index daily returns of these names individually over the same period versus NVIDIA today. As you can see with our notations on the chart, Microsoft, Intel, Oracle, and Cisco only rallied between 188 and 483 percent on a price basis in the 692 days post-1995. By contrast, NVIDIA's current gain over the same number of days since the end of December 2022 is multiples of those, again at 1,147%. So the takeaway here is that NVIDIA has enjoyed far better returns over the last almost three years than some of the most important enablers of the internet in the back half of the 90s. That's because NVIDIA has the advantages of a much stronger and more profitable customer base with both publicly held hyperscalers and also numerous private companies that are receiving huge funding from venture capital and private equity to buy its uniquely necessary product offerings. As for what makes NVIDIA so special and Gen AI so promising versus the late 1990s, consider Moore's Law. In 1965, former Intel CEO Gordon Moore predicted that the number of transistors in an integrated circuit would double every year and believed that this growth would continue for the foreseeable future. Then in 1975, he revised that estimate to a double every two years. That's roughly been the pace of improvement in computing power per dollar ever since. Now, there's been 15 turns in Moore's Law since. Uh, 1995, meaning computing power is nearly 33,000 times greater than 30 years ago. 
That astounding increase in compute is driving incremental complexity and expense. To put this number in perspective, it's the difference between driving one mile and driving just over one time around Earth. That's the existential difference between 2025 and 1995. Right now, there's a real scarcity of true Gen AI plays in public markets, and unlike the 1990s, that could continue for a long time. Consider that it only took six months and a few million dollars for Netscape to build the Navigator browser in 1994. Conversely, Gen AI takes years and many billions of dollars to build. The barriers to entry are therefore dramatically higher now than the 1990s, so the scarcity effect could last for years and propel public company valuations to extremely high levels, even more than the late 1990s. That's especially true if companies continue to choose to stay private for longer, like OpenAI and Anthropic have so far. And while Moore's Law is slowing, there's now Huang's Law, named after NVIDIA co-founder and CEO Jensen Huang. Huang's Law says that computer chips for AI, also known as GPUs, are getting about twice as powerful every two years, not just because of smaller transistors, like Moore's Law, but also because of better designed, smarter software, and faster connections. Moore's Law is slowing because it's based on smaller transistors, which can only get so tiny whereas Huang's Law can enable AI performance to grow exponentially for years to come. As a result, compute per dollar could increase at an even faster rate than the last six decades of Moore's Law, given the multiple compounding effects of Huang's Law. Newer GPUs don't just pack in more transistors, but they also make compute more efficient per transistor. This could accelerate the effect of technology on stock prices, among other things. Expectations for the next few doubles in computing power and what these new uh, products and services can create helps explain why U.S. big tech stock valuations are so high and why NVIDIA has an over $4 trillion market cap. It's tough to know how Huang's Law will develop, but we've been structurally overweight technology since we started DataTrek over eight years ago, and we're certainly sticking to that view now. With that, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Please hit the like and subscribe button. You can check out our daily investment newsletter by signing up free on our website, datatrekresearch.com. You don't have to put a credit card or any information in. Just drop, drop in your email and you'll be good to go. And please let us know if there's any topics you'd like us to cover. We want to make these videos as helpful as possible. So with that, again, thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and we really hope you have a great day.